Give us a sense of this, Rob, this uh, retail trade phenomenon. Is it here to stay? It's exploded, has it not? It, it, it has, and, and thanks for having me, David. I think the way that I look at it, I mean, Gina just said it on the last segment, the retail household you know, during the pandemic and otherwise was flush with cash. So what, what do you start to do? You say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get in on some of the stock trading and I'm gonna understand how to do it. And Robinhood has created a phenomenal customer acquisition machine. Right? The way that they put the app together, how easy they make it to trade, how easy they make it to open an account. It's seamless, you know, it's very well done in terms of having that beginner trader really have the opportunity to go in and, and buy some shares. So, you know, there is some, there are some different things that, you know, we should talk about in terms of the risks involved to the, you know, to that first time investor, but, you know, I applaud them in terms of the customer acquisition and just the explosive growth that they've demonstrated over the past two years. So Carl, I want to talk about the risks, but just before we get to that, to pick up on what you just said, how much of this is because we were trapped at home and a lot of people, particularly, frankly, maybe some younger people got some checks from the government. They wanted to put them somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I think it's to be seen in terms of how many stick around and how many continue to do this post pandemic. But I, I do believe that it, it's here to stay. And I, once you show individuals and you start to educate them on dealing with their finances and how simple it can be once you start with a bank account and budgeting and then understanding where stocks and bonds and, and other asset classes can fit as you continue to grow and, and become a more savvy investor. I think places like Robinhood have really opened doors for people. So I do expect a great deal of that to stick around. So Carl, give us a minute or two on the risks. And as we talk about the risks, one thing I'd like to focus on, is it a risk to the investor, which is serious, you want to take it about, or is there a larger risk to the system that goes beyond the individual investor who might lose their money? So, so, so I think there are both, actually. So, so just taking the, the individual investor first, which has always been you know, my focus, I think that first and foremost, there has to be the education. They have to understand that when you invest in stocks, when you invest in crypto or other asset classes, there's a complete risk of loss, right? Over the past couple of years and, and sort of the growth that we've seen, some of the meme stocks, the amount of money that can be made on trades, it's been rather fantastic upside for everyone involved. So you see a friend make some money, what are you gonna do? You take that stimulus check, you take the extra dollars, you open up a Robinhood account and you get on the train, right? And, and you continue to make money. But there is that downside risk and, and it's that downside that I think it's incumbent upon all of us work in financial services to really help that new retail investor understand what it is that you're doing, understand the options that they have to invest, to trade. Does that fit with their overall profile? Is that part of their budget, right? Can they actually afford to lose the money they just put in the stock market? Right? We've all seen indications of those dollars you know, turning very quickly from a profit to a serious loss. And that can be very damaging if those are the only funds that you have in your bank account. So, so that, that's sort of the individual side. And I just hope that we continue as, as a group to focus on, on education more so than gamification, right? I think gamification as you use it to educate an individual can be a phenomenal tool, right. but it can be very risky when you use that as, as part of enticing trading. And, and that's just a line that I, I think yeah. we're gonna have to figure out as we go forward. Just the, one, just the word I wanted to go to, because my question really is, can you preserve the value of this business and move away from gamification. How much of the value really is getting to people pl to play it like a video game? Yeah. So, so I think the, the playing it like a video game and, and making it easy to adapt to and easy to use is something that makes it such a great client a customer acquisition tool, right? Being able to get more and more people engaged. So I, I think it's important that individuals learn how to deal with their own finances. Right, and that they understand that these tools are available. There are so many great tools coming onto the marketplace fintech particularly in financial services and, and the, the availability of applications for the consumer to really deal with their funds has just exploded so there's some great great apps out there and i think you know it, it's important that we continue to sort of nourish and, and flourish and that that behavior of interacting with your cash on your own and starting to learn how to trade you know and invest so is is that the you know the only thing of their business model or is that the only part that people are coming for you know, I, I don't think so. I, I think it's it's opened eyes of many around to say, I, I can do this, but that I can do this, you're often gonna need some help, right? You need some, some either whether it be professional advice, whether it be the right educational tools to help you understand how to move forward with your finances and how to deal with them in a safe and practical way. 